and coming to the uh, adc analog to uh, digital converters so analog to uh, the modern analog to digital converters will have the sampling rate of 1 mega samples per second okay so uh, in the sense it can take the samples of 1 mega samples per each second that much of uh, sampling rate it has so the resolutions the it can uh, be 8 bit or 10 bit or 12 bit which is to represent the converted value resolution is nothing but to represent the converted value in terms of bits so if you take step value what is the here i have given the formula uh, the step value is nothing but the minimum va value uh, the adc can monitor say for example uh, the formula is v reference divided by 2 power of n minus 1 n is nothing but the resolution here say we have n of 10 So two power of ten minus one one zero two three. Say we have configured V reference voltage as two point five volts. Two point five divided by one zero two three, it will be around two point five millivolt. That means the step value, uh, the step value is two point five millivolts. So below that value, ADC cannot monitor. So that is the minimum value. That is the minimum change uh, the ADC can respond to. Okay. Here we have the formula for the. Converted value in count. So, what are the input voltage in volts multiplied by two power of n minus one, the number of levels divided by the maximum uh, reference voltage. So, by performing the operation, we'll get the count value. Say, for example, once the conversion is completed, we'll have the count value in the register, right? If you want to convert back the count value in terms of voltage, what we have to do that count value we have to multiply with the reference voltage. And you have to divide with the number of levels, nothing but two power of n minus one. In our example, one zero two three, so that you will get the actual input value given to the ADC. Correct. And uh, the ADC conversion can be continuous or one shot. So one shot in the sense, uh, it will just go and it will take one sample converted value and it will come out. So continuous in the sense, it will continuously convert the input value. say if you want to have the number of samples streaming number of samples say if you want to have uh, if you want to capture the samples over a period of time uh, say 48 milliseconds so till then you can uh, for such scenarios you can configure the adc in continuous mode so that it will continuously convert the values and those results you can capture okay so till you stop it won't stop in one shot it will automatically stop once the conversion is completed for the one sample so there are uh, features like window monitoring window monitoring for selected channels in the sense uh, say for example you want to have certain values to be accepted certain input values to be accepted you can configure high and low values so that it will allow only the values which are in between those two values so other values it will discard so you can have this window to accept certain voltage values and to discard the remaining values and event triggered conversion if you want to initiate the adc conversion upon some request say timer request say if you want to convert only for every 10 millisecond time so you can have the timer for every 10 millisecond time you can generate a trigger based on the trigger it will start the adc to convert okay and averaging and over sampling with decimation to increase the resolution so this averaging and over sampling basically to increase the resolution say for example if you are saying adc has 12 bit resolution in the sense this is the maximum resolution this is the hardware restriction beyond which we cannot go but still we can increase the resolution by this averaging and over sampling circuitry so here the number of samples will be averaged and so that the resolution will be increased by using the averaging and over sampling technique so even this feature is also will be there for the modern adc controllers and positive and negative voltage conversions in old controllers if uh, they can only they could only be able to convert the positive voltages only but in real time scenarios since the voltage is an analog parameter which depends on the external inputs we cannot always say it gives the positive voltage only so there may be the scenarios that it can give the negative voltage also if we feed the negative voltage to the controller controller might damage right so then so there may be needing of the inversion circuit to convert the negative voltage into the positive volt positive voltage and then only we have to give to the controller 
but the modern adc converters has this additional feature called negative voltage conversions where even you can give the negative voltage also for the analog pin it will convert and uh, it will give the value the negative voltage signed value okay and optional dma transfer of results so when it comes to the continuous conversion it will keep on converting and it will keep on generating the results for each time conversion right so those results will be stored inside the buffer so every time you store the uh, you store result into the buffer it will make one memory operation every time it make the memory operation it will use the cpu resources it will use the cpu execution time so if you want to uh, have the bulk memory transfers without intervening without intervention of the cpu core so then you can have the dme feature where it will store all where it will move all the register values into the memory into the specified memory without the intervention of the cpu so that the cpu execution time can be saved okay so here i will be explaining the block diagram here we have you see we have the input controller register and based on the input controller register you can select the required input we can adc can have several number of inputs right the inputs can be selected by using this input controller register and the reference controller register to configure the reference it is not that the reference voltage is fixed so basically in adc what is the reference voltage reference voltage is something uh, the maximum voltage where we cannot measure the converted value beyond the reference voltage say for example reference voltage we have configured as 2.5 volts so the input voltage cannot be more than 2.5 volts so the adc cannot convert uh, the voltage which is maximum which is beyond the reference voltage so here we have to select the required reference voltage you can select 2.5 or 3.3 so our internal reference voltage we have this feature and to configure the adc we have the adc registry the control registers or average control register sampling control register event control register and software triggers one shot or continuous mode kind of thing or as event based kind of triggerings can be controlled by using this register and averaging and sample can be controlled by using these kind of registers then we have the post processing the post processing is basically to control the adc converted values so this is also comes in built with the adc along with the adc hardware circuitry so the post processing includes uh, if you want to correct the output value the gain correction or as the offset correction these can be performed in the output and window mode as i said if you want to discard certain values if it is not falling under the range of low value and the high value low threshold and the high threshold that can be uh, done by using this window monitoring feature and at the end the value will be uh, stored inside the result buffer so here i have tried to listed uh, the six apis for the adc uh and the adc will have even more number of functionalities so we can keep add on this apis actually so here i have tried to list certain functionalities only and the adc unit basically to initialize the adc hardware units uh and driver related uh, variables or buffers uh that will be uh, adc unit is the responsibility of these operations and set up result buffer this is to set the result buffer for each group in the sense if you want to store the result in a certain memory location so that is possible by using this api so you can have this api and start group conversion so to initiate the group conversion here uh, group why i am specifying as a group in the sense you no need to convert channel by channel you can have a group of channels say for example 10 channels as a one group so you can initiate conversion for all the channels at once as a group so that is why i am specifying as a group here so adc start group conversion it will convert the uh, conversion for the requested group and stop group to stop the conversion and read group to read the result values to required output buffer so you can specify the output memory location so that it can store the uh, whatever the result values onto that output buffer okay it will read the result value and it can store the values into the output buffer for the requested group and get group status will give the group status uh, in the sense whether the adc conversion is ongoing or else adc conversion is completed or is partially completed 
or as the ideal uh, or the adc is an ideal state so this kind of status can be fetched from by using the adc get group status okay so let me explain the sequence diagram so here uh, the sequence diagram is given to read the adc converted values so the user initially needs to initialize the adc hardware by invoking this adc init api once this api is invoked uh, invoked all the adc hardware will be initialized to their original values and then to initiate the conversion the user will uh, will call adc start group conversion function and in the driver what we do based on the adc configurations will make uh, register settings and all here once the register settings are made the actual conversion request will be initiated to the hardware here so the hardware might take certain amount of time to convert the value to convert the external input value right so during this time you have to wait till the conversion is completed otherwise you will get the wrong values from the read bu uh, result buffer right so for that purpose we have adc get group status so the you can have loop and in the loop you can check for the get group status and if it is since it is in progress so it, this get group conversion status function needs to be defined to give the bg as a return value so that it will stay here only uh, till the adc is busy so once the conversion is completed it will give the conversion uh, uh, status as completed so the get group status will become completed so once the status is completed we can invoke the adc read group to read the results into the output buffer got it yeah so coming to the use cases so here i have tried to uh, give the applications for each peripheral so when it comes to the gpio uh, leds or uh, buffer on and off we can use the gpio functionality or uh, for the push pull buttons if you want to read uh, the push pull button status if you want to interface them so you can use the gpio peripheral and keypad interfacing for keypad interfacing also you can use the gpio and same for the lcd interfacing if you want to print certain data if you want to communicate to the lcd you can use the gpio pins and relay controlling if you want to make or break certain contact uh, by using the relay that can be possible by using the gpio and external interrupt interfacing say for example you want uh, to have a external interrupt from the gpio say upon the falling edge of the gpio pin you want to perform certain operations so that is possible by using this gpio and coming to the timers or counters uh most of the time most of the timers will be used <clears throat> uh will be used in the scheduling of the tasks so when to invoke the particular function and how to schedule whether whether the function needs to be scheduled in the 10 millisecond routine or 1 millisecond routine or uh, these kinds of things mostly in the os the timers will be used and the event generation if you want to generate a event a uh, periodical event or a non periodical event or based on certain things if you want to generate certain events so that is possible by using timers or counters and frequency measurement we have some input clock and if you want to know the frequency of it so you can use the timers or counters and motor control applications by generating the pwm uh, you can control the motors and lighting control applications like traffic lights so if you want to Uh, turn on the green light for certain amount of time, or and then immediately if you want to switch off the train, and if you want to turn on the red, and for such applications, uh, the timers or counters will be used. Even for the alarm generations and time stamp generation, if you want to know the date or uh, uh, time year, all such things are possible here. And the system key PLA status. Say for example, for every one hour, there are no operations are being performed inside system. For example. so it is an ideal state say so but user uh, needs to know the whether the controller is alive or not since there are no operations so you you may think that it is dead right so to give the status for every 1 hour or 2 hours so the, these timers or counters can be used and for hot fault traps say there is some illegal operations you are performing inside the co inside the uh, controller so in such cases it goes to hot fault traps and it will never come out so it will stuck over there 
So how do we know that by using watchdog timer, uh, we can initiate the reset of the controller. Okay. So in such applications also, the watchdog timer will be used. <laughs> and coming to the ADC, analog to digital converters, most of the sensors are of analog sensors. Like temperature sensor, it will measure the temperature and it will give the uh, output in terms of out voltage, analog DC voltage. So by measuring the DC voltage, we'll get to know what is the temperature. And humidity, CO2, uh, Hall effect current sensor. These are the physical parameters can be measured by using the sensors. And if the sensor is giving analog output voltage or current as an output, and that can be monitored by using the ADC. And the applications like potentiometer, if you take accelerator as an example, how much X throttle is requested by the user. So that will be known. Uh, by using the ADC because uh, in the accelerator they will be using potentiometer kind of thing. So by uh, providing certain voltage to the potentiometer, we will get output voltage. By monitoring the output voltage, we will get to know what is the accelerator position. And even based conversions, if you want to convert, uh, yeah, this we have already discussed even based conversion. And system health monitoring like voltage or current monitoring kind of thing. For example, if you want to monitor your controller uh, VCC voltage, power supply voltage continuously. So that is possible with the ADC. And battery health monitoring system. Like uh, most of the um, industries like uh, railways, you can say, or TP, thermal power plants. So most of the industries needs you pay for 24 by 7 uh, power supply. So there they will be using battery banks, right? So if you want to measure the battery bank's health status, so all the battery banks are, will give the pro, will provide the DC volt, DC output voltage only. So by monitoring the DC output voltage, you can get to know what is the health of the battery, right? That is possible. These kind of applications, the ADC will be used. And coming to the career prospects, uh, low-level driver developer has a scope in these domains, like automotive domain, semiconductor domain, internet of things, and railways. So in automotive domain, in the sense, uh, uh, take uh, car as an example. Take car as an example. So it, uh, it will run on the ECU, electronic controller unit. So it will have the several nodes, like uh, uh, instrumentation cluster will be having, and to uh, uh, automatically turn, uh, open or close the door, we have. And the, uh, to monitor the emission, we have. And to control the injection system, so we'll be having several sensors and to monitor the ambient temperature or as the internal temperature. So we'll be having the sensors. So when it comes to the car, we'll be having so many sensors. So when there is a sensors, most of the sensors will be compliant with the one of the uh, microcontroller communication technique. Like they could be ITC sensors or else the ADC sensors or else the spy sensors. They, uh, they'll be giving the output in terms of uh, those peripheral communication. So that if you want to read those output values, definitely there will be need of low-level driver developer. <clears throat> and semiconductor industries like uh, Infineon or uh, uh, you can say a microchip, these kinds of uh, Atmel. So these kinds of industries, uh, along with the chip, they will be providing the low-level driver supportability so that uh, third-party vendor no need to uh, bother about the drivers because the semiconductor industry, which will be, which will have more knowledge on the controllers and their limitations, right? So if they provide the driver layer along with the controller, along with the microcontroller and the microprocessor, it will make their life easier. They can easily incorporate the MCALs into their uh, stack. And the Internet of Things, uh, take smart home as an example. We have, if you want to control automatically the lights or uh, the fan, AC, or uh, heater, glazer, anything, uh, there is a need of a sensor and there is a need of the control system. So when there is a need of the control system, there will be definitely a electronic system. So when there is an electronic system, there is a need of a microcontroller and the microprocessor to interface or to control and to interface the sensors or else that to control the actuators. As use cases also, there will be scope for the low-level driver developer and even in the railways. So in the railways, uh, we'll be having the power banks, like I mean, battery banks, or else uh, the signal lamps, or else the display boards, or uh, the relays. So all such uh, applications, so the firmware is needed. 
and the low level driver development is needed uh, the expected the commonly expected skills from a low level driver developer are emergency programming skills and the controller peripheral knowledge and the sensors characteristics what are the output or input characteristics of the sensors and the autos are stack if it, if we if we are talking about the automotive industry and the debugging skills and there is a problem reported from the customer we should be able to debug and fix it and assembly will be added advantage and these are zigbee and fc wifi these are the communication protocols which will be used for the smartphones or iot industry and roles and responsibilities of a uh, firmware engineer are uh, the design and developmenting of a firmware so sometimes we will be involving in the requirement phase as well it depends on the project and the sensor interfacing and the uh, uh, mcal development microcontroller abstraction layer development and the debugging sometimes debugging leads to fixing and sometimes it might lead to patching functional and unit and integration testing so we may be involved in the testing phase as well and adherence to sdlc certain projects or uh, the software development life cycle uh, will be varied uh, project to project or else from the company to company so there may be waterfall method or uh, v model or uh, excel kind of development one should be able to adhere to that uh, software development life cycle in order to develop a firmware and data acquisition and analysis so if you take uh, automotive or uh, uh, railways as an example most of the time the data need to be acquired from our system and that whatever the data is acquired we may need to perform certain analysis to draw the trends or to detect the failures so yeah this is the end of the session